folks. Uh, you'll probably notice that uh, our minister's not present. Uh, he's uh, tested positive uh, to COVID. Uh, so you might uh, share a prayer for him. Um, welcome to our service. And uh, may God bless and inspire you. And, and we well. welcome our online congregation as well. It's great that every Sunday that we can reach out to you. Our acknowledgement of country. As we gather for worship this morning, we acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which we are meeting and recognise their special cultural bonds with these lands. We commit to seeking the reconciliation between first and second generation nations, peoples of this land. And so we pray for those involved in this process and for the Aboriginal elders, past, present and emerging. Our call to worship. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help and you have healed me. O Lord, you brought up my soul from Sheol, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favour is for a lifetime. We gather here to praise our God. Let us give thanks for what the Lord has done for us. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing on our service this morning. May your spirit envelop us, separate us from the spirits of the world, lead us into deep communion and endow us with spiritual talents that we may bless others and help bring the world towards your salvation. In Jesus' name. And now our prayer of confession. Together, let us confess our sins to God. Merciful God, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear then Christ's word of grace to us. Your sins are forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be to God. <clears throat> now we're going to light the peace candle and also, uh, I think, a candle for um, peace in Ukraine. Um, so I'll just read this. Now that, now that we have made our peace with God, let us wish those around us the peace of the Lord and let us all pray for his peace to descend on the places of this earth where there is war and injustice. In his precious name, we light this candle. Amen. We continue our worship with the hymn, A Breath of Life Come Sweeping Through Us.
first reading Acts um, 9, verse 1 to 6, the conversion of Saul. Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing, threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. For the stories from the founding of your church. Thanks be to God. Second reading, John 21, verses 1 to 19. Jesus appears to the seven disciples. After these things, Jesus showed him again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon, Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that, it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of the large fish, a hundred fifty, a hundred fifty-three of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to them, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. For the good news that Christ brings, thanks be to God. Thanks, uh, Sonia. Let's pray. Almighty God, in you are hidden all the treasures of wisdom, wisdom and knowledge. Open our eyes that we may see the wonders of your word and give us grace that we may clearly understand and freely choose the way of your wisdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now uh, Bruce is going to magically appear before us and deliver the sermon. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, this is reminding me of 
the uh, COVID pandemic, how we used to film from home. So uh, COVID has once again brought us to this. I'd like to thank you all for your prayers uh, for me and Ben. And as we recover from the COVID, I'm feeling a, a lot better uh, than I was a few days ago. So thank you. So let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So what is in a name? Here in this first reading from Acts, we are dealing with a man who lived under one name, but after a certain life-changing event, changed his name to something else. Under his first name, Saul, he lived an exemplary life as a Jew. In his own words from the letter to the Philippians, he speaks of this life. He had been circumcised on the eighth day as required by the law, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews. As to the law, a Pharisee. As to zeal, a persecutor of the church. And as for righteousness under the law, he was blameless. Pretty good credentials for a man of Saul's standing. But in Acts, we first come across Saul in his role of persecutor of the church as he stands aside as the martyr Stephen is stoned to death. And then we see him again as a persecutor of the church in today's reading as he is on the road to Damascus to go and arrest more Christians. When I became a minister, I developed an intense interest in people's conversion moments. Not all of them, of course, are as dramatic as Saul's. Many are simply acknowledging for ourselves that we believe and that we have faith in Jesus. I've always said that at some stage in our lives, we must do this, no matter if we have been going to church all of our life or if we come to the church later in life, we must say, I believe. Maybe you can remember your own special moment. However, Saul's conversion moment was certainly memorable in his eyes and in the eyes of the church. As I said, he was riding to Damascus when he was knocked off his horse by a flashing light from heaven. He fell to the ground and he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? To which Saul replied, Who are you, Lord? The voice said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Saul is then instructed to go into the city and wait. At this point, Saul cannot see. Something like scales covers over his eyes. He had to be guided by hand into Damascus, and for three days he neither ate nor drank. To fill in the story, a Christian named Ananias reluctantly came to Saul because Saul had such a reputation and was very much feared. And Ananias instructed him in the faith and placing his hands on Saul, Saul regained his sight. He was then baptised and began to preach the Lord Jesus Christ in the synagogue, so much so that the Jews plotted to kill him, forcing Saul to escape back to Jerusalem and meet up with the church leaders there. Eventually, Saul is sort of sent out to preach the word of God, in other words, to become an apostle. And this is where he takes on his new name, Paul. With this name change, Paul identifies that all those things he considered as honourable for a Jewish man, he now counted as rubbish. All that <coughs> mattered was serving Jesus. Typically for Paul, the efforts he put into persecuting the church, he now put into proclaiming the risen Jesus. And his letters to the various churches that he creates forms a large chunk of the New Testament. For many people, Paul is the ultimate apostle. He says, I believe, and then devotes his life to this belief. He experiences that transformation of life that knowing Jesus can give us. So now, now let's turn our attention to the story of the other apostles, as recorded in John's Gospel. 
It is a fascinating snapshot. The risen Jesus had appeared to them twice in the upper room, and yet we find the disciples having returned to their old trade of fishing. I suppose they hadn't received the Pentecostal Holy Spirit quite yet, and they did need to eat, so fishing was probably a good thing. And it also returns them to where Jesus initially called them on the shores of Lake Galilee, or Lake Tiberias, as it is known in John's Gospel. After not recognising Jesus at first, they did not do so until he instructed them to fish on the other side of the boat, and they caught a netful. When they came ashore, dragging the net behind them, Jesus had made them breakfast, and once again he served them their food. This leads into a significant dialogue between Jesus and Peter. Three times Jesus asked Peter if Peter loves him, and three times Peter replies that he does. Three times before the crucifixion, Peter had denied Jesus. Now in this situation, three times, Peter says he loves Jesus. Jesus charges Peter three times to look after his flock. In other words, to become the shepherd of Jesus' followers, the leader of the church. What a turnaround for Peter. Such forgiveness from Jesus to make the man who distanced himself so vehemently to put him in a leadership position. Jesus then goes on to say about someone fastening a belt about you and making you go where you do not want to. Such is ministry when you take it on to this extent. To be true to your ministry, you often have to do something you don't want to or to go somewhere that you don't want to go, but you must in order to serve the Lord. Just as in the Garden of Gethsemane on the night of his arrest, Jesus did not want to do what he had to do. He is the example we have to live by. And so he concludes this dialogue with the words, follow me. So here in a nutshell, these two readings give us an idea of what it is like to first of all acknowledge our faith in Jesus and then to follow him. From Acts we see that in every Christian's life there must be a time of transformation from someone who is merely human to someone who acknowledges Christ as their Lord and Saviour. It also then requires us to incorporate that following Jesus into our lives all the time in everything we do, not just when it suits us. The Gospel reading then teaches us the beauty of forgiveness as Jesus places the church in Peter's hands when most of us would tend to be very, very wary. When the going gets tough in the future, is Peter going to be reliable or is he going to run away again? It's an appropriate question for all of us. Are we going to tend to Jesus' people as Jesus would want us to or are we going to ignore or abandon them? So what's in a name? Saul, the persecutor who kept the church in fear, changes his name to Paul and becomes one of the church's most powerful advocates. Simon has his name changed by Jesus to Peter, in Greek Petros, meaning rock, and becomes the rock on which Jesus builds his church. So what is Jesus going to do with your name? And what are you going to do in the name of Jesus? Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, give us the strength that we need in order to follow our Lord Jesus Christ as best we can. Help us to live our discipleship to the fullest and to spread your love for all people wherever we go. Through Christ's precious name we pray. Amen. Let us worship God with our offering.
Russian annals, there is no greater form of worship than personal sacrifice. So we ask you to accept the sacrifices we bring and bless the, the application of these gifts in the extension of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, Amen. Uh, now, yeah, please be seated. Um, now, it's time for prayers of the community. Heavenly Father, we plead for the safety of the people of Ukraine in Jesus' name, and we ask that you will bring the violence to an end. We pray for all who are suffering in other countries too, and ask that you will show us what we can do to help. We pray for our own country and ask that you will not remove your blessing from us. In the coming elections, we pray that your will be done. We pray for the sick and injured, the homeless and poverty stricken, those with drug addictions and mental health issues, and we bring before you those known to us in need of prayer. For Joey undergoing cancer treatment, for Lorraine, a former member of Dandenong North Congregation, for Elizabeth, for Jacqueline and Michael, for Sandra and her niece Desiree, for Jim and Grant, for Ivy, Gus and Ian, for Donna, for Marlene and Ian, for Chrissy, Brody and Kelsey, Barbara, Paul and Lorraine, and for June, for Jill and Ian, for Bob and Phil, for Jan, for Pearlie and Dennis, for Syene, for Kathy, for Jeanette, for Helen, for Ross and Beck, Daniela and Mason. And for all those in need of prayer but have not made their requests known, Lord, hear our prayer. And now let us pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And save us from the time of trial, but deliver us from the evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue our worship with the hymn, Here I Am, Lord. Thank you. 
these notices for this week. Next Sunday is Mother's Day and uh, um, this Wednesday we've got a Mother's Day store which we had one uh, on Wednesday just gone and we raised $200 um, from it. So there's still a lot of goodies in, in, the, in the hall. So um, please stay and have a look at them. You may be tempted with something. We've sort of kept the, uh, the prices quite low. Um, Sunday the 15th of May is the volunteer service. Saturday the 14th of May, um, we're going to have a, a, a get together talking about people who are afraid of death. Um, it came up in a discussion that we had with the pastoral care group and we thought, look, it'd be really good to sort of get together and talk about this because, look, some of us are ready and that they said, well, I'm happy and I'm not. I'll tell you the truth. I'll be honest with you. Um, I have a fear. But as Suzanne said the other day, we have a fear one day and the next day it's OK. So, look, it'll be really great to sort of gather with us and get sort of talk to one another and, um, uh, you know, have a great discussion, have a morning tea afterwards. So uh, if you're interested, if you just let Bruce know, um, that would be great. But all, I think so far we've got about eight people, so it's encouraging. There's a need. Thank you. 14th of May, what time? Pardon? 14th of May, what time? Sorry. Um, it's from 10 till 12. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else want anything to say? Yeah. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, next Sunday will be a Communion Sunday. Um, just talking about death, um, I remember uh, somebody um, explaining death this way, that uh, it's like a closed door um, and, uh, and you know the master is on the other side. And he said, if you see a dog, knowing that his master's on the other side of the door, he'll be wagging his tail and can't wait to get in. <laughs> <laughs> Our words of mission. I want to start with a, a little parable. A man was courting a woman and she invited him over for a meal. She took a day off work to shop for the ingredients for a, for a special meal and tended it with love and care. She even burned her finger on the stove trying to make it perfect. The man arrived and when the meal was dished up, he said, I don't really want that. The dog can have it. And he scraped it into the dog's food dish. He said, I feel like a pizza, so let's order one. <laughs> the, um, you know, many people, even some in the church, do something like that. Jesus spent his whole life, not just one day, preparing something very special for us. He didn't just burn his finger, he suffered crucifixion, making it perfect. And when it is offered up, some people say, that is just religious rubbish, it, it can go in the rubbish bin. Or they say, there are many ways to God, let's choose what appeals to us. So our words of mission. Remember the personal cost of Jesus' gift of salvation and be thankful to him. Let him see in your heart deep appreciation, gratitude and praise. And now our, our, our blessing. Now may the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. We have a recessional hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be.